Naperville resident Randy Ogren's passion for art took him to the very early days of the Magic Kingdom, where he helped make the attractions come alive. In 1971, Walt Disney World opened its doors and over the next four decades, generations of vacationers saw his work. I caught up with Ogren in his home studio as he gave me a glimpse behind the happiest place on earth. Ever since he was a little boy, Randy Ogren loved drawing and painting and dreamt of one day becoming a Disney animator. In 1965, shortly after marrying his high school sweetheart, RJ, and his wife Suzanne met one of their idols, Walt Disney himself, by mere coincidence during a trip to Disneyland in California. Turned around and turned out Walt was standing right behind us talking to some guests and he was waiting to get a hot chocolate. He never cut lines and he, he liked to walk around the park and just talk to people and I turned around, I almost spilled my drink on him. I just turned around and there was this, oh, you know, <laughs> it's Walt Disney. Little did RJ know that he would one day work for Disney but not as an animator. When the recession hit in 1970, RJ took up whatever job he could, including fixing and painting vinyl chairs, before entering the U.S. Coast Guard. RJ shared his Disney aspirations with his sergeant, who immediately called Disney World and landed RJ a job as a monorail pilot. Soon after, RJ got a job as a Disney World artist, painting the skins of human and animal figures for all of the attractions at the Magic Kingdom, from It's a Small World to Jungle Cruise to his favorite, Pirates of the Caribbean. You had to be very, very precise. If you made a mistake, the skin would bubble and yet the skin was ruined and you had to start over with a new skin and they were expensive. Um, and actually when I first got there, I had to spend the I got to do the animals because they have thicker skins and easier to work with. But doing the human figures, they kept giving me old ones to work on and practice until I could get it right. When he asked why he was picked out of 14 applicants, he was told... Because the skins that you're going to be putting on the figures, the human figures and the animals, is reconfigured hot melt vinyl glue for strength. And the paint you're going to be using to paint these figures is acetone-based paint, which is the same paint you were using on the chairs. That's how I became an artist for Disney, it was because of these stupid vinyl chairs. And so I tell young people especially, don't be afraid to put something on your resume because you never know when it might be the one little key. RJ also painted murals for many of the attractions, including those at the Haunted Mansion, and he even designed the original costume for the park's first Jiminy Cricket character. RJ says it's because of those experiences that he gained his work ethic and learned a valuable life lesson. If Walt asked you to do something, or if you could figure out, he'd come in and say, I want to try this, can we do that? You didn't sit there and go, hmm, uh, um, hmm I'm not sure or you didn't say, no, I don't think so, you probably were fired. What he wanted you to say was, yes, Walt, I can do that. And then Walt would leave the room and you'd go, ah! <laughs> you'd run and figure out how to do it and then come back to him and say, well, this is what I've come up with. I've learned there's always a solution to everything. And there's a solution to every problem. That's actually been a basis of my life and how we brought our kids up. You know, don't worry about things. If something happens, there's a solution to every problem. And then something that came from Disney. Meanwhile, his wife Suzanne took his spot working on the monorail, hoping to get her foot in the door for a job in entertainment. A year and a half later, Suzanne became a costume character, performing as Sleepy, Bianca, and Mr. Schmee. You do have kind of a magic when you're doing it. There, there's just a, a history about Disney, at least in our family, because I grew up with Disney, that actually being out on that street or on that stage and performing for people that come there maybe once in a lifetime, you know, is something very, very special that you don't forget very easily. In 1980, RJ left his dream job at Disney shortly after attending the groundbreaking for what would become Epcot Center, while Suzanne moved on to become an entertainment manager at the park until 1994. I work on every attraction uh, and I had redone figures 
um, two and three times. And um, I saw some opportunities uh, that I could go after on my own. Uh, I felt I could make better money and uh, shocked everybody, shocked the family. I mean, just people couldn't believe I was leaving Disney. Um, but it turned out to be a good decision. Since then, the two have returned to Disney World with their own grandchildren. And RJ just can't help but critique the work of those who've come after him. Going to work at Disney and doing that as an artist literally changed my life. Once I got involved with it, when I got really good at it, I realized that uh, I was on a different level. That everything I had learned in college was okay. What I learned at Disney was an education way beyond anything else I could have done. RJ continues to paint murals for others at his home studio and is a motivational speaker, hoping to teach others that when you wish upon a star, your dreams really can come true. I'm Kevin Maycheck for Neighborville News Extra.